Hi everyone, this is Nelson from the College Panda and this video will be the first in a series of videos on how to effectively use a TI-84 calculator on the SAT math section. As you may know, there are two math sections on the SAT, one with calculator and one without calculator. So obviously everything you learn in this series will only apply to the section where you can use a calculator. We'll start off with some calculator basics and then move on to some programs that you can download and use to get through certain question types extremely quickly. But before we dive in, there are two things that I want to mention. The first is that the calculator or whatever programs you use are not a substitute for an actual understanding of the topics. This is really important. A calculator will help you avoid silly mistakes and speed certain things up, but if you don't know the underlying concepts, you won't get very far. The calculator can't be applied to every question you see, and even when it can be applied, you still have to understand the nuances of the question to use the calculator effectively. The second thing is that it's not enough to just store a bunch of calculator programs the night before your exam. This is a really common thing that I see among students. Once they realize there are calculator programs out there that can help them, they download a bunch, but then they never actually use them. Now, why is that? Because the reality is that you have to actually practice using the programs so you know what they're capable of and what situations you can apply them to. So if you're going to use calculator programs, experiment with them early on and incorporate them into your practice. Otherwise, you simply won't use them because you'll lack the experience and the comfort level. You're not gonna to wanna to figure out how to use your calculator at the same time, you're also trying to figure out how to do a really tough question during your actual test. So in later videos, I'll tell you how you can get an all-inclusive program that I designed that's specifically geared towards the SAT, as well as a calculator practice workbook that I wrote to get you accustomed to the calculator and the program itself. But for now, let's dive right in with some calculator basics. So in front of me, I have a TI-84 plus calculator, and when I turn it on, I have some previous calculations that I made earlier. Now, the first thing that I want to mention is this keypad, the left, right, up, down arrows. So by pressing up, I can actually scroll through my previous history, and by pressing enter, I can re-enter a previous calculation that I made. So this is really good if you made a typo and you want to re-enter everything without having to type it out, I can use the second left and second right arrow keys to go back and forth between the beginning of the line and the end of the line. So for example, let's say that this six should have been a seven. I can press delete and then second insert and put in a seven and go from there. So second right to jump to the end of the line and there we go. So the next thing that I want to point out is this math menu, which you can access by pressing this math button here on the left. And this brings up a variety of menus. And you can see that there's a lot of functions within each of them. Now, if I know what I'm looking for and I don't always want to have to press this down arrow to get there, what I can do instead is press alpha down to zoom to the next page. And similarly, I can press alpha up to go back to the previous page. So to quit from this math menu, I press second, quit, or if I'm in the math menu, I can just press clear to get out of it. So clearing all this out, let's say I have a fraction like four thirds, and this gives me back the equivalent decimal, 1.3 repeating. But let's say for a certain question, I end up with a decimal and I want the equivalent fraction. What I can do is go to this math menu again and use this first function, the two fraction, and this will give me back the original four thirds. Similarly, if I want the decimal, I can use this two decimal function, and this gets me back to 1.3 repeating. Now there is a hidden menu that not a lot of students know about, and the way I get there is press alpha y equals this key up here, to access the F1 menu, and I can actually scroll through the various menus using these top gray keys. But the one we'll focus on is this first menu, the fraction menu. 
and I can actually kind of do what we did before. So this function here, number four, is the two fraction or two decimal. Uh, whatever you have, it converts to the other one. So right here, I'm converting the 1.3 repeating back into a fraction and doing it again, I can convert it to a decimal. And let's say that I have this four thirds, I can actually convert it to a mixed number by using the third function here. And this should get me the one and one third. And I can do it again to get me back to the four thirds. So this is a helpful menu if you're working with a lot of fractions and you need to convert back and forth. So quitting out of that, the next thing that I want to show you is how to reduce fractions. So let's say that I have five tenths. We all know that reduces to one half. I can go to the math menu and use the two fraction method again to actually reduce that down to one half. Now that might not seem very helpful because you know five over 10 is kind of an easy fraction to work with, but let's say I have something a bit more complicated like you know 12 over 96, I can go ahead and reduce that down to one eighth. The very last thing that I wanna show you in this introductory video is how to work with scientific notation. So let's say that I have 50 times 10 raised to the 20th. When I press enter, it outputs this strange looking thing, five capital E 21. Now, what does that mean? Well, it simply means five times 10 to the 21st, this capital E, which I can enter by going second comma to get to this double E, it just outputs one E but it means 10 raised to the. So the output here is again, five times 10 raised to the 21st. And you know, if I do something like six E uh, seven, that's six times 10 to the seventh. So that would be 60 million. So don't get confused when you see this capital E, it's just a simpler way of displaying scientific notation on the calculator. So that's it for this video. If it was a little too basic, don't worry. We'll be covering more advanced topics in future ones. This has been Nelson from the College Panda. Thank you for watching.